everybody, Martin at Flickered Feathers again today and I'm tying another mullet pattern for you, this is uh, the mullet bach obviously inspired by the dial bach, although it's evolved a bit from the original dial bach it's a good pattern for the estuaries um, and it'll catch more than mullet uh, I've caught black bream here which is a snapper um, and sea bass or bass if you're in Europe right the, depending on what the nomenclature is of the species where you live as always I'll put a materials list in the description along with a link to the Patreon page for anybody that would like to support the channel get access to the monthly fly tying classes members only content and enter the giveaways you can also subscribe hit the bell button hit the like button share the video watch it all the way through that all helps the channel so I've got my hook my vice it's a size 12 Camazan B170 you can use the full and mill all purpose medium something like that if you want and I've got a wee red bead on it now you can tie it with one red bead or two uh, up to yourself the two beads you get a bit more weight and a wee bit more flash and glass bead catches the light so it transmits it I mean probably carry both really that's what I do I've run on some brown thread this is Uni 8 and Camel actually but any kind of brownie thread is fine I've just got to catch in my tag which is Globrite number 4 and I've got 10 strands and just catch it in and then just ease it back until it's behind the bead and you've got no waste oops, slipped there too busy talking same again, just put that in then back down to the start of the bend Tail length up to yourself. I don't like it too long, so that body length there, which is maybe half a shank really when you take the bead away. I just tidy that up. Now I'll tie in my rib, which is just it's just gold tinsel. Um I suppose you could use holographic if you want it. I'm just using uni, it's a double sided and it's a 14, it's a small. Just pull that in. And then tie back. Silver side facing me so that I got a gold rib. And the body is just a single strand taken for a peacock eye. And I just strip it from the eye and I'm going to tie it in just by the the wee tag that comes off the rake. I say that we sort of bit of skin or whatever it is. Um, from the quill see it against my finger there, that wee white speck so that I got all of the usable fibre so I'll tie that in and I'm going to go forward tidying everything up, touching turns making a nice underbody of thread you don't need to make it super smooth like a tinsel body but I want it fairly smooth now because it's just a single strand of peacock hair I'm going to put some varnish then underneath it now varnish is not the strongest or best it's not really an adhesive but it is better than nothing um, I'm not going to use super glue because this fly is going to be used in salt water and cyan cyanacrylate is not salt waterproof so I'm winding this towards you because of the side of the eye that I took it over right so that when I wind it the herl is on the back edge and the quill doesn't flatten it right, it gives you a nice sort of rib effect as you go forward and I'm just going to come right up to behind the bead catch it in fold it back take it two or three maybe even four turns over it tie it off now if I'd taken it from the other side of the eye, so I took it for this side, if I take it from that side I would have to wind towards myself to get the same effect. And then 
I'm going to count a rib with my tinsel, so that has to come towards me on this case. Five turns, right? And you know it's five because it's the right size tinsel. And then because that's coming the opposite direction, take a turn over the material and one on the thread, and repeat that and fold the material back tie over it. And what that does, it stops the material trying to pull your thread back down the spiral. Right, because they're actually, although I'm winding towards myself with the tinsel, it's on the same, that makes it on the same spiral as the, the thread's turning and it tries to pull the thread back. Right, so that lock and turn onto the shank of the hook prevents that from happening. I mean, you could just whip finish and you'd be done here if you wanted, but I'm going to take a wee pinch of Peacock Spectra Flash Dubbing. Very, very sparse, don't need much. I'm just going to fill in that space at the back of the bead. Stabilising everything. Keep it nice and sparse. And just a tiny touch more for the whip finish. So, I'm going to tie two whip finishes, as, you, as I like to. Um, One is fine, but two's, you know, it's not like it's a hassle to do a second one and it does add that wee bit of extra security. So, I'm just going to push the, that sparsely dubbed thread up there. Coming in with my whip finish tool. Position it so the hook is a weight, like outside of the dubbed thread, right? It's one clear thread. Then make your wee four. So that when you tie the whip, it's the, the leg, right, that makes a knot and that's the dub tread taking over it. When you pull it, you'll feel like it'll nearly seat and then support your hook, give it another wee tug and you'll feel a wee slip and, it'll, and then it'll lock up. And that's the, that's the knot fully seating and then I'll just take a three turn, it's fine here, behind the bead and that'll just slide in behind that dubbing and it's, that's you're super secure. the thread and then we wee, wee bit of varnish there just like that go in the back of the bead and your fly's done so I hope that was useful I hope you enjoyed it if you did remember to give me a thumbs up below and I'll see you for another video take lines guys bye